such an honor to be here at the India Inclusion Summit 2020, speaking to all of you uh, virtually today. When I think about the idea of India and the concept of inclusion, you're reminded of scale, you're reminded of diversity, you're reminded of all the differences, social, economic, cultural, in a country so vast, physical illness, mental illness, there are so many things that divide us, that differentiate us. And yet here we are speaking about inclusion. What better context, what better country to be able to champion the idea of inclusion than India? Hi, I'm Neha Kirpal. I'm a mental health ambassador based in India. I run a mental health tech startup organization with Dr. Amit Malik. Uh, and uh, I run a mental health think tank called Librem, uh, which is based in the UK. And uh, it's with a few global scientists we look at uh, designing system solutions for mental health, working with governments, working with organizations, uh, corporates, and educational institutions. The idea is simple. For such a large, complex problem, with so many dimensions, everybody's needs are different, every user is different, everybody's story is different. How can we think about solutions and strategies and ideas that can bring it home for each one of us? I'll start with my own journey. My mental health story, my inspiration for doing what I do today. When I was five years old, my mother started showing signs of schizophrenia. We didn't know what schizophrenia was back in the 1980s. It was just a, a whole series of things that didn't make sense. To a child growing up in this country, in a community and family in urban India, we had no level of education or understanding of what these mental illnesses are. What should we do as a family? And how do we cope as children growing up in this country? I went through school, I went through college, uh, trying to make terms with what, what became of our family. My brother suffered immensely. And I have to share with you today, about a month ago, my brother died by suicide. It is the most tragic thing that could have happened to our family after looking at mental health and mental illness for three decades. I share this with you today in the hope that there are other brothers and other sisters who can hear something in this story that might stay with you, something that might help, something that might inspire, something that might challenge, and something that you might take away that can make a difference. India has over 200 million people suffering from mental illness. And mental illness is very different from mental health. WHO says mental illness is a one in four problem. But if, it, if one person is affected, the whole family is affected. And therefore, practically, it touches on all our lives. When you look at what mental health is, a state of well-being, a state of resilience, a state of physical and mental health that, is, that induces that state of well-being, uh, we, we can recognize it in its fullness. But oftentimes, we are only looking at the challenges of mental illness. You look at depression, you look at anxiety disorders and more severe conditions like addictions and psychosis. And you can see the whole spectrum. If you think about all the feeder um, causes that lead into that, whether it is domestic abuse, domestic violence, uh, lack of inclusion, physical disabilities, uh, there are so many challenges that feed into the dysfunctionality and the disease of mental illnesses in this country. And yet, you look at a 95% treatment gap. India has one third of the global burden of mental illness. One third depression of the, of the world sits in India. One third suicide. It's the only country where the suicide rates are rising. I don't know if you know, there is a student dying by suicide every hour of every day in this country. Those are our statistics. But I'm not a statistic, and neither are you. For us, this is a matter of our life, our dreams, our sense of self, who we are. And you know, no matter how much we run away from it, we are always a collection of all our life experiences. So if I look at myself, a combination of the genetic makeup that I have, in my family history, what are the mental health illnesses that have prevailed? If I look at my early childhood experiences, Look at trauma, look at abuse, look at several of the things that so many people, particularly girls in this country, go through. And then I look at the journey after that, the journey growing up as an adult. 
as, as a woman trying to do something to overcome the challenges of mental health and mental illness in India, to try and go into business, to try and transition. I spent 10 years working in the art world. I, I founded and ran an international art fair, which I sold uh, two years ago to move to my life and passion in mental health. Just the ability to be able to do that. All the forces around me, it almost feels like conspired to help create that outcome. And this story of some level of experience, some strength, some hope is what I bring to you today because I know that when I share a story, everybody has a story to share. So I would encourage and I would look to everybody here to just go inside, go way back into your lives, into your childhood, into the dreams and ambitions that you held and the traumas that you faced because of whatever, the lack of inclusion, the discrimination, the disabilities, or simply the mental handicaps that some of us go through. And ask ourselves, is it not worth trying? Is it not worth giving ourselves another chance? What can we do to nurture that sense of self? What can we do to recognize and find that inner child within us? You know, we talk about inclusion and often we exclude ourselves. Right? The sense of abandonment that some of us go through when we have been through a journey that is, that feels full of neglect, full of abandonment, full of rejection, it becomes almost something that we embody from time to time. And I would urge that we all try and find that whisper of a subconscious voice within us, that voice that is telling us, you're worth it, you're loved. I care, we should all care, there has got to be a way for us to work through this. And so when we think about this large mental health problem, but we think about the simple needs, the simple challenges that we face when we actually go through that. I have seen depression, psychosis, suicide and several other mental health conditions in my own family. I'm sure we all have. What do we do about it? What does it take? If you think about the 95% treatment gap in clinical terms, do we know there are less than 5-7 thousand psychiatrists in this country? So access to organized mental health services, clinical interventions is limited. But what can we do as a community? When do services get built? When people demand them, right? If each of us could just step up and recognize the needs that we have to treat mental illness, and the desire we have to nurture mental health, we might be able to put forward a demand that forces people to build the services and build the platforms that are needed to serve the mental health needs of this community. When we look at physical health and mental health, there are lots of crossovers. I'm sure we recognize when people are dealing with diabetes, people are dealing with cancer, cardiac issues, uh, pregnancy, postpartum depression, there are lots of conditions that have a mental health overlap and we've all been through them in some way or the other, either directly or within one or two degrees of separation. So if we can look at educating our institutions, our organizations, sensitizing communities for the need to recognize when things are going wrong, we must remember mental health is a spectrum. It is not a day or a night. It is not black or white. It's not that one day we're ill and one day we're not, right? So if we were to just say at some point or the other, because of grief, because of challenges, because of whatever it might be, we all go through certain spells of mental health to mental illness. And there are times when we can help ourselves and a little bit of self-help, a little bit of self-nurturing, a certain routine, sleeping, eating better, all of that can help. And sometimes we need a bit more. Sometimes we need therapy and counseling, that might help. Sometimes we need medication. Some of us need support in an inpatient residential facility for some time. And then we can go on to self-support. The idea is to recognize that all of those are better than not doing anything at all. You know, we often feel, I, I always like to say, helplessness is not hopelessness. And often the first step is the hardest. Here's another fun fact. It takes people four to five years at the least to be able to get to their first mental health appointment. 
Now imagine if you break a leg or you hurt your eye and then you wait another four or five years before you get anywhere. The challenge is that people don't know where to begin, right? And my experience is you begin with just talking about it, right? You begin with recognizing what's wrong either within yourself or with those around you. You begin by reaching out and talking more openly and asking for help. You begin with the faith that if you ask for help, help would find its way to you, right? I think that is the beginning that I can hope for. And I hope that as we look at, you know, in our journey, both with InnerR and with Librem, but particularly with the work that we are doing on the, the technology platform that we're building, we believe it's all about access. It's about reach, right? If there was a way that everybody across the country in any language could reach 24 by 7, at least a little bit of help, at least the first level of intervention that might set them off and then they can get more help later, right? That would be a great starting point. My dream for India as someone who has suffered the brokenness of this mental health ecosystem, as someone who did not have the education, did not have the awareness, we suffered as a family. Not one generation, but two, right? I'm 40 years old and the last 35 years of my life have been a tragic story of mental health. And I am now trying to set out to make some difference in changing that. But it can't happen by one person. It can't happen by 10 or by 100. The easiest way to bring change is to start talking about it. The more we do that, the more we reach out, the more we reach within. And if we can change something inside of us, I guarantee you that will bring about a change bit by bit in infrastructure, in the supply, in clinical services, and in all the rehabilitation and inclusion that we need to be able to make India a truly inclusive country where those suffering from physical illness and mental illness can have a better life, can have a full life, and the right to the whole human experience. Thank you very much.